You got to love, love Monday. Monday. All right, so last week, man, <clears throat> we talked about how we are pretty much entering into this, you know, financial bubble in our society and how the, you know, where you should probably be putting your money mm -hmm. and, you know, kind of a little bit about the history of money and why it isn't really worth anything now, <laughs> right? <laughs> But I think we did you guys a disservice because I did not tell you the root of all of this. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. on me. Don't you worry about it. I'll get it covered here. So one day, very long ago, okay, what you have were stars in the sky, okay? <laughs> and these stars exploded. And once these stars exploded, they created dust, material, mm. right? Yeah. And minerals, and these minerals trickled down, and they landed into the sand in yesteryear. And what was produced? <laughs> gold, right? Yes. So this gold was produced, and that's how people exchanged. That's what we started to use as money, mm -hmm. right? That's how <clears throat> people exchanged or added value to certain things. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we are into the 21st century. Mm -hmm. And we no longer use that gold, but it's still very much here. Mm -hmm. In fact, it seems as though our government has done everything it can to discredit gold as an asset class. And, you know, I'm a stock guy, a little bit of a stock guy myself. And so I, I did a little research. And I, I just went back at least to 2001. Gold has outperformed the Dow Jones Industrial Average. In each year. That's like 15 years. Why does it seem like we fear gold so much? What, what's that about? Okay, so we don't fear gold. The governments do. Okay. Because it, it keeps government in control of overspending their money. Okay. If money is based on gold, you cannot just print it out whenever you want and just mm. put it in your economy and stimulate it. Because that can have a very bad problem. Because, as you know, banking system is all about mathematics, a lot of different type of calculations, and then they use all these big words to confuse the people. Right. Basically, what it is, is that if money was based on gold, they don't, we don't have unlimited amount of gold and silver in the world. Yeah. And it will restrict the amount you spend based on gold. Well, but how is that? So how are they restricting what I'm doing, you know what I mean? Like I go to work every day, I produce, they pay me. And so how is it restricting what I'm doing? Like how does they, that, that doesn't make sense to me. I understand this. Remember the first episode that we, when we had, when we were understanding and evaluating our knowledge about money? Right. We figured out what? Our most important thing in life is time and uh, freedom. freedom. Okay. That's the two most important things. Now, Majority of our time, of our life, of, or majority of Americans or people around the world, their life is based on going to work in the morning right. and producing enough so that they can survive, their family can survive. Yeah. For what? To get this paper. Right. Because now all of a sudden we we have transactions based on that paper. We transact on those paper. But the problem is those ba paperwork, th those paper is not doesn't have any value. Because right. it doesn't have any backup. Okay. It doesn't have any real assets. Oh, that makes sense. Because, you know, we were yeah. researching about history, right? The, right? That paperwork, it's convenient to carry things around and say, hey man, this is a check. It's a legal tender that says I have value stored in here somewhere. Yeah. And this is a check that you can go and access that. Right. Okay, okay. So it has to have that, that foundation, basically. Yes. At home. Okay, but you're, you're saying that I understand that. But it seems like, you know, if we print more, if we have more of this money, doesn't that mean that we can produce more? Like, I can produce more buildings. I can produce these things because I have more dollars. Right. Okay, so there is a byproduct for this whole calculation. So let me give you a little bit of definition of inflation. Okay. What is inflation and what is deflation? Inflation is the expansion of currency in the marketplace or in the economy. Right. Not money. It's currency. Currency. Deflation is the contraction of currency in the economy. Hmm. Now, if you expand currency supply, what happens is prices go up. Right. Because it's like a it's like a pool of water. Let's give this analogy, like a pool of water. Okay. And it's currency supply. And prices is like a sponge. So if you put sponge in the pool of water, it soaks in that water. So it goes up. Hmm. That's that's how 
prices go up. Deflation is the contraction of currency supply and that brings the prices down. Mm -hmm. That's the whole drama of it. Now, as you can probably understand that you know, all around the economy, all around the world, prices of goods and services keeps on going up. It never goes down once it's up. Have you ever seen anything going down? And the specific reason is because it's not the products or services are being more valued or it's getting expensive. It's just that the value of money is going down. Ah, uh, okay. So now you need more money to access the same amount of services or goods. That makes sense to me. That makes sense to me. And I, I, can, I can see where you're going with it. So you're saying that when the gold was in, in the vaults, yes. okay, when you produce that money, well... I, I couldn't just go out and get as much of those paper dollars as I wanted because there's only so much gold mm -hmm. there. Yes. And it has to be somewhere. Yes. But the minute you step outside of that realm, you can produce more, but that's just going to make the cost of things go up as well. Yes. That's why things start to inflate. Yes. Mm -hmm. And this is exactly what happened in 2008. It, the prices of goods and services, basic goods and services, kept on going up and up and up while our minimum wage was stagnating. Mm. That's what was the problem was. Now, because you you know we we both yeah. been learning and you know evaluating about our life and you know the most important thing is the financial education. Yeah. Explain what happened two thousand and eight. Two thousand and eight. My gosh, uh, we saw a our global <laughs> economy pretty much pretty much explode. And see, the big thing wasn't see two thousand and eight was kind of the it was just going to happen no matter what. You yeah. know, that was that's, that thing was going to happen, no, happen yeah. no matter what. But what we really got to see is what happened that next year. Yeah. Because in 2009, we saw something called quantitative easing. Mm -hmm. Now, quantitative easing sounds like a an extremely complex word, you know? Yeah, yeah. But really all it means is currency creation. So just like you were talking about the inflation, it just means that we are creating more currency. Mm -hmm. Simply that. And so what we did, what our government did, is say, you know what, banks, you have done such a good job ruining our global economy. We love you. So we're going to produce more of these dollars for you to bail you out. For ba crashing the world's economy. Yes, for crashing the world economy. And do you know what the banking conglomerates did? They said, thank you so much for bailing us out. And we're going to show our appreciation by paying ourselves record bonuses. For, again, for crashing, cr crashing the global economy. Stupidity. I don't know. I, I think, I would think, or you would think that we would learn from over-creating this one thing because the surplus is what gets us in trouble. Mm -hmm. I mean, that goes with a lot with life, too. So if you get too much of one thing, it's usually a bad byproduct. But, hey, what do I know once again? I'm just here talking to my man, Moin. Not a whole lot I can do or say about any of this, but it seems like a global phenomenon. It is a global phenomenon, and it is the first time that this is going to happen all across the world. Yeah. Like before in, in history, this kind of stuff happened, but it happened in one particular country at a certain time. Yeah. Now, all of a sudden, we have this global marketplace that's about to like go through this dramatic process. Yeah. And this is why I realized. And you agree with me, I guess, right? Uh, that, we'll um, see about that. Yeah, because most of the times he doesn't. We don't agree with each other. No, he's no. he's he, he's against my point of view, and I'm against his point of view. We're just different people. I mean, I don't know how we hang out together. He just just <laughs> he irritates me really. <laughs> he's, he's laughing. I mean, I'm really serious about this topic, and know. he's laughing. And you see, saw his analogy about star and all that stuff. <laughs> what was that? It was a waste of time. It's beauty, artistic. Oh my God. Too you much. Have to love that. Anyway, long story short, I, I, you, I think you mentioned that, that, that it's very important for, to go to the future and for our next generation to have our own financial education first, before, even before we go to school, to become mm -hmm. this and that, because that's one of the problems that a lot of people face is that because it's not taught in schools or in churches or Anywhere else, we don't get this financial education about what this is. No, completely and hidden knowledge. Hit, it's like it's like a secret, mm -hmm. and we suffer when we graduate and go to the marketplace, and all of a sudden, it's like our value of what we thought is going to be there in the market devalued. Absolutely.
But it, see, this is this is what you get. This is this is what's funny about the whole thing. We say it's hidden, but it was hidden in plain sight. It seems like <laughs> you put something right in front of someone's face, and they will be sure to overlook it because we're always we think we're always looking toward the future. It is funny how psychology works. Yes. I think we need to talk about psychology in, a, in another show, yeah. but how things work in your brain, in our personality, I was always interested in that. Yeah. And it's interesting to see that when you give something for free, people don't value it. No. And when it's right there in front of you, you didn't work for it, people just don't value it. It doesn't matter how important it is. That's very true. I should start charging just to open my mouth because I love to talk and I feel like, you know, I've got a lot to give. Why not? Yeah, so this is, the, this is the difference when it comes to Dallas Real. We are right now sh learning ourselves and we are into personal development, trying to go through all this paperwork yeah. and we're going to share it for free. Yeah, you have And to. because when, when, I, when we wanted to do this, there was not one platform where no. I could go and learn all of this stuff. Really? And uh, this is what Dallas Real, I think, is about. We create episodes every day and we attack. We attack a topic and then we dissect it. It's like a video game, like you, you, play, you, you learn how to play this video game and you dissect these pieces and then you share it and then you get feedbacks and then you can improve yourself more. That's what we're going to do here in Dallas Real. Absolutely. Right? And we encourage you to get on, log on, man. Check this out. Learn something. Learn this something is free. This is free. This is free. What? Why should you not? That's my favorite price. But hey, if you want to continue to learn from us, we encourage you. Please tune in right here to Dallas Real Networks on Money Mondays. It's CJ and my main man, Mo. Till next time.